but he wanted to get into the site tutorial walkthrough that we had talked about in the bankroll management series. So you have to have a profitable process to be a winning player at DFS. So you shouldn't be putting money into play until you have a consistent profitable process. Um, and the way that I've always done that is by back testing on lineupcruncher.com. Um, lineup cruncher. <laughs> Fantasycruncher.com. I, I combined lineupstudy.com and fantasycruncher. Um, but those are the two sites that I that I, I study other players and um, trends and have developed my own process. So this is free to use. You just go to fantasycruncher.com, the lineup rewind. You can register for the site, and if you register, it'll save all your stuff. Um, but for this, we'll just go through just so I can give you an overview of everything. So we'll just go tab by tab. We'll show you what I use, what I don't use. Uh, we'll start here with the game filter. This is all the games. Uh, we're looking at March 4th. This is this would be yesterday. Uh, there's a seven-game slate. Um, it also has options to build on the turbo or the night slate. So if you're playing all the slates, I play all the slates. So I'll click on turbo, and you'll see it just uh, removes the other teams, shows the teams that are playing. And to get them back in the player pool, you just go back to select all, and everybody's back in your player pool. Uh, you can choose how many lineups you want to make. Uh, one of the things that you can take a look at is actual score. This is pretty neat. I uh, click on actual score, number of lineups, and this will show you, it'll spit out the top score that you could have got last night. So 396.25 uh, was if you were perfect last night. Um, and this is where you see that actual score, actual score, and we'll compare it to how that would have done. Uh, this is one of my favorite tabs right here, the DraftKings contest data. You click on this, and it shows you slate by slate of not all of the contests, but you know you get a pretty uh, big idea, a good idea of, of what went on, and shows you across the top. We've covered this in a previous video, but the one that I'm always curious about is the top score. So you can see that the actual score of what was available was 30 points better than any of the top scores for the night, which is going to be pretty typical. Um, but you can see here that you needed to be in at least you know the 350 range to make any noise, and that's pretty common. Uh, seven times your salary, $50,000 salary, seven times that is 350 points. So that's typically where you're going to want to be for NBA. And with that in mind, that's how you can start working on your process uh, to build to build lineups. Um, once you uh, know where you need to be, then you can start your back testing and you can start running crunches. Um, this is just with the default fantasy cruncher settings um, and projections. I believe they get their projections from rotorwire.com. Rotorwire I actually take projections from another site that I use and I upload them and then I make adjustments as I go. So it's somewhat of a, a hybrid approach uh, for how I make my projections. And you can sort this by the actual score, order produced, I always go to the actual score. So a 293. So this is where you would start running some tests on, okay, we did this with one unique, and I'm sorry, we did that with three uniques. So this is the only tab for NBA that I use, the general tab. I don't use the position stacks, team stacks, groups, and I don't even know what the My Data tab does but the only thing that I change here is uniques I like three um, if you like one or two four or five that's up to you but basically all this is telling you is each new lineup that you create a new player will pop up in the next lineup so if you want a really tight core you do one unique if you want to open up your core a little bit more two uh, I like three because it gives me a nice blend of the the top plays the top values of the night and mixes in some one-off players uh, that could go bonkers that are going to be lower owned that that win you the tournaments. Uh, you can try four, you can try five. I wouldn't go any higher than five. But again, you, you want to do testing. And this is how I would go about doing testings. So we ran a three unique. And this is how you label a crunch. You click on this little pencil. Th uh, three unique. And then you would click save. Obviously, if you were logged in and you are registered, it would save it for you. Uh, we're just going through to give you guys a... Uh, a crash course of how I begin testing to develop a process. So we'll run a lineup for one unique. We're just doing 20 lineups at a time. I run 150 per slate. You'll want to run 150. That's actually a much better, um, gives you a much better idea of how many um, 
lineups actually could have got to 350. 20 is not a big enough sample size in my opinion. Plus, I always like doing 150 because that's what the big contest, that's how many you can put in. So I'm always practicing and building up to getting into the big contest. So here we have a one unique crunch and we see our top score was a 268. So I'll often include that as well just for, for quick referencing of, oops, one unique and we had a score of 268 on our three uniques. Did I look at that right? Yeah, 268. And here we had a 293.75. Pencil went away. So I would put that in there. Uh, we'll try two uniques next. Two eighty-five seventy-five. So we have in just a random sampling three perform the best. That's pretty much what I've found. You can run a ton of these and there will always be outliers, but for my research, threes just always work best for me. So again, I'm always talking about you got to do what works for you. That what that's what works for me. Uh, so so that's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys a little trick here. Um, that is a uh, a new feature that Fantasy Cruncher has added this year. So this is a really cool uh, set of options here. Remove my projections. So if you had um, uploaded your own custom projections, and I'll show you how to do that next. Uh, I don't ever use any likes or dislikes. I don't use this one. Um, but the one that I use most on this is removing my projections, copying the player list. So we'll just click copy player list. We'll go over to a Google Sheet, and you can copy and paste. And everything here at this point, you can you can customize and, and upload back. So let's say that um, you wanted to take the Fancy Cruncher projections and you wanted to adjust them. So what I'll do is I'll cut this one and move it over next to the name. And let's say we really like LeBron tonight, so we're going to give him you know uh, a ten point bump or Jokic. You know oh you know Trey Young he's got salary increases over 9300 I don't really want to play him I think he's gonna revert so let's downgrade him to 35 points so you just take that scale down copy and paste upload data copy and paste upload projections so I think you actually might need to be signed in uh, to upload the projections so that looks like what we're running into here, an issue here. But that's that's what you'd want to do. Or let's say you wanted to add a column for ownership. So we'll just ownership. And we'll say Giannis is going to be on at 30%. LeBron's probably 60%. Jokic probably 20%. Trey Young's probably going to be 25%. Donkic is going to be about 33%. Mitchell probably a little less, around 15%. Randall, uh, Anthony Davis didn't play last night, so let's say he was probably about 30%. Nobody's ever on D'Angelo, 10%. So you can just you know copy and paste that from a site, or you can um, do your own. It doesn't really matter. I'm not a big ownership guy when it comes to basketball. So what you would do is, so we'll just clear all the rows, add, and we're going to add ownership. You copy and paste. Oops. So let's try that again. Let's just delete these for a second. We're just going to worry about the ownership. And you want to make sure you have the right number of tabs, uh, excuse me, columns in between. So there's three in between. So I'll keep three there. Player name. Boom. And then you would hit upload. Again, you have to be registered because it's not saving any of your data. That's why it's not working but that's what you would do. And then any custom projection that you uploaded, um, let's see, I think you have to be logged in for that as well. So um, Late Swaptimizer, this is an awesome tool. Um, it's a little bit too advanced for learning how to do stuff, but uh, I'll show you guys how to use this eventually. Uh, the Restore Crunches, 
you had a crunch and you were logged in and saved, everything would save here. So all of the stuff that you saved with labels, it auto saves everything. And then, so anything you ever crunch would be in here. And then if you're labeling them, it makes going through the information a lot easier. Um, again, this is my favorite tab. Um, shows you all of the contest, gives you a um, pretty good idea of what you needed to win. You can also click on the contest links. So let's go to, so last night, this was the big tournament, the 777, 150,000 to first. So let's see, so I gotta log in, okay. So I'll log in. I don't even know if I know what tracking is fast uh, Let's see. Oh, I think I know what it is. I don't know it. So if you have to lock into DraftKings, then you'd actually be able to see the, the contest. Hang on, let me pull up. I'm logged in on Chrome. So go to Cruncher, Rewind, DraftKings Contest Data. So ridiculous. All right, and so here we see this guy, Matty G. He had a score just under 340. And this is why um, I don't really pay attention to ownership outside of knowing that to win a tournament, you need ownership that looks like this. So this guy didn't win because he had LeBron James. LeBron James actually underperformed. Um, you know, he did need a Powell because of his salary was so low. He did need Rondo because Rondo got to a ceiling game. Um, but this is how he won. Healed at less than 20%. Gobert less than 15%. Jay Crowder less than 10 Beverly less than 10 Brunson less than 10 So even though Brunson didn't come up very big for him, um, it didn't really hurt him, especially on a night where everybody was on Alex Len, and Alex Len scored 9 points. So um, that's why he was able to win with a score of 340 versus 360 that we saw in some of the other tournaments. Um, the other thing that I will look at, I always like to look at, is the full contest uh, rules and prizes. You can see all the payout structure here. Um, this is the number of people in the tournament. This is the buy-in. Uh, Multi-entry, you can enter up to 30 times. So... Let's close this out. And you can see a lot of that data on the page as well. Entry fee, prize pool, entries, number of entries. And this will show you if it filled. So this is what DraftKings wanted to get to hit their commission rate, their rake. This is what actually into this one filled. They paid out 20%. The top score was a 339.25 for $150,000. The cut line was a 286.25 and the minimum payout for that was $1,200. So um, again, this is just a way to go about developing a process and learning how to do back testing. And so when I say, you know, you need to build up your sample size, and the reason I got good at MBA was just, I was just constantly back testing, back testing, back testing, uh, learning and seeing what works. I'll do a deep dive on um, what you need to have a successful MBA process. But most of you, if you're here, you, 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 you might know most of that, and this is a way that you can get better. And don't necessarily worry about hitting the high score for the night. I would focus more on, hey, we ran three sample crunches here. We had one that had the highest score. So what could I do to improve on that higher score? Would that be running 50 lineups? So we'll just run 50 real quick. Um, would that be running 100, 150? Again, you have to find your own process and, and make, your, make it your own. Um, and we'll just do a quick, we'll wrap up after this. So we're, we're trying to beat a, a 293.75. So I'm only gonna run 50. A full 150 takes about 15 minutes. So if you are serious about getting good at running 150s, um, it's perfect. You can let it run, uh, go do laundry, uh, go to the grocery store, 
do other things. Um, you don't have to necessarily sit in front of the computer. Um, so we got our 50 done. So again, 293.75 uh, was the same here. Um, had it on two unique, so there we go. And that's the other thing. So this is a two, not a three unique. Again, I like three uniques, but uh, it took 29 lineups to get to the 293.75 on a two unique, where we got there in 11 on this one. So again, that's why I like two, uh, three over two. Uh, here's a cool little trick. Let's say you're running uh, different groups. You click on select lineups and you can move this one into that one. So we'll do that right now. So we have a couple duplicate lineups that will automatically remove those. And so we'll delete this one. And now we have 59 unique lineups. So there's just a couple of things that you can do. Again, it's all experimentation. It's all about finding your own style, your own rhythm, your own um, whatever you're most comfortable with, and just getting your process dialed in so that you can gradually increase your score, build up your sample size, build up your confidence level, put real money into play, and then move up the stakes. Uh, that's exactly how I did it. And I hope this guys helped. You. I hope this helps you guys out. Um, if you want to. Get in touch with me. Um, let's see. Open a different file. Pull up our little outro. So professional. Should have this pulled up before. Here I am. So email me. Here's my Twitter. Building up a website. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. If you don't like it, don't tell your friends. Uh, we just took care of the Fantasy Cruncher lineup rewind walkthrough and demonstration. So the next video we'll do. Um, as one of these supplements for the bankroll management series is a walkthrough on lineupstudy.com. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to me on any of these platforms. Thanks again for watching.